Hi everybody. In um, this video lecture, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, our beginning strategies for argumentation and writing an argumentative essay. Um, this argumentative essay is kind of the culmination of all of the other types of essays we've written. Um, and this one really is, is kind of the foundation of academia. This is as you proceed and, and move on in your education, this is going to be the kind of essay that you find yourself writing often. And it has a lot of moving parts. It has lots of different things that we have to include technically in order to make a successful argument. Now this first video is just going to focus on the thesis statement and subsequent videos will focus on lines of reasoning, evidence, and counter-argument rebuttal. So this is number one in a series of four. So before we talk about the thesis statement in an argumentative essay, we want to talk about what an argumentative essay or what argumentation is to begin with. What we're doing when we write an argumentative composition is we're making a series of statements, we're going to arrange them in a logical order, and we're going to support them with sound evidence. And they're going to be so powerfully expressed, these statements that we're making about our topic, that by the end of the essay, the reader can't help but to agree with what we're saying. That's what an argument is. Um, and a couple of words that should stand out as very important, logical and sound evidence. We're not going to be overly emotional in our writing. We're not going to, um, you, you know, we're not going to appeal to our readers' emotions or appeal to our readers' weaknesses. We're going to present logical, sound evidence, and we're going to do it so well that our reader won't have a choice but to agree with us, okay? There are four building blocks of an argument. The first is a debatable thesis. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Once you have a debatable thesis statement, then you develop a line of reasoning. And a line of reasoning is when you tell your reader why you think whatever it is you think that you stated in the debatable thesis statement. Then we're going to, after we've developed a line of reasoning, we're going to find evidence to support our thesis and line of reasoning. And then at the end, before the essay is over, we have to include an acknowledgement of the opposition. And again, this each of these topics will be covered in a separate video. I'm going to also post this, this um, visual organizer um, to the learning management system. So it, it might help you with your, um, with your outline just a little bit. When we're building an argument, we're saying, here's what I think. That's the debatable thesis. Here are the reasons why I think this. This is the evidence that I'm providing. This is the counter-argument and the rebuttal. And just kind of a brief overview of counter-argument and rebuttal. A counter-argument is what the opposition is going to say that's, that's opposing what you've claimed in your thesis statement. It's going to be the opposite point of view. And you include that in your essay so that your reader understands that you've considered all sides of the situation, which again is, is logical, and that's what we're shooting for in these essays. So a counter-argument acknowledges the opposition, and a rebuttal um, talks about the opposition's weakness. So that will come in a later video, but you might print this off. Again, I'll post it in the learning management system so that you can um, kind of maybe fill this in as you're working on your essay. Now, one thing I want to caution you against as you begin to work on this argumentative essay, it says here, this is what I think. These are my reasons. This, this, this evidence backs up my reason. You could argue. These are all first and second person pronouns. We absolutely do not use first or second person in argumentative compositions. It will be third person only. So instead of saying, I think the death penalty um, should be repealed, you just say the death penalty should be repealed. It's the same thing. Your reader understands that it's your assertion. But when you take yourself out of it, it becomes a little more logical and a little more objective. So consider that as well. All right. 
again, you want to be sure as you're thinking and you're planning that your appeal sounds right, that your argument feels right, in addition to being logical. And we have to use appropriate appeals. We want to appeal to the reader's common sense, right, and, and their notions of right or wrong. We're not trying to persuade them of anything illogical, and we're not trying to make them feel tricked into um, to, to siding with us. We're going to present the evidence very logically, very clearly, in an organized way so that they can't help with agree with help but agree with us at the end of the of the paper. So there are three ways to appeal to your reader and the first is ethos. You have to establish trustworthiness with your reader. Um, you have to you know be honest, you want to appear credible, you want to make realistic claims, projections, or promises, kind of depending on the direction your paper is going to go. You can't make a claim that is completely unrealistic, all right? You want your reader to trust you. Again, you're trying to persuade them to agree with you, and so you need to appear trustworthy. That's ethos. You're ethical. The second way to appeal to the reader is through logos. And this is the one I really want you to focus on. Logos is logic and the avoidance of overly emotional appeals. You want to engage readers positively. You're not trying to scare your readers. You're not trying to anger your readers. You're just trying to logically present the facts. You want to use a fitting tone. We do not want to use exclamation marks. All right, That indicates to our reader that we're a little overzealous, and that's not the image we want to project. Okay, That's not a fitting tone. We want to motivate them, not manipulate them. We're not going to trash talk the opposition. We're not going to use language like stupid or ridiculous. It's overly emotional. All right, We want to be logical, clinical, think Dr. Spock rather than Captain Kirk. Um, you want to use arguments and evidence that readers can understand and appreciate. And the third type of appeal is pathos, which is um, an emotional appeal. Um, and when you do that, you connect your argument to, to readers' needs and values. Now, I always warn my students that pathos is really should be very low on the list of things that you, ways that you want to persuade your reader. All right, this is a very emotional appeal. Um, and you, you risk the, you risk making your reader feel manipulated if you are too overly emotional. Again, I want you to focus on logic and ethics and not so much on emotions. And when I think of pathos and the overuse of emotion, I think of the Sarah McLachlan commercial, um, the ASPCA with the pets, right? And she has the sad song playing in the background, and she's showing these pictures of these horribly mutilated pets, and they're all going to die unless we send the money. And I'm sympathetic. All right? I'm a crazy cat lady. But she is not appealing to us logically and maybe not even ethically, she's appealing to our emotions. She's, she's hoping to manipulate us. Well, probably not she. Um, she's, she's just a singer. She, probably the organization is hoping to manipulate us emotionally so that we do what they ask us to do, which is send the money. So avoid overly emotional appeals. Okay? All right. Moving on to writing the debatable thesis statement. This is the how-to, all right? Your thesis statement for an argumentative composition will be a claim. It's a debatable statement. There will be somebody out there who can say the opposite of your thesis statement, all right? This is the key point that you're going to make, and you're going to defend so well that your readers are going to agree with it. Now, write these things down and look at the thesis statement that you write for this assignment and, and check it against these things. A strong thesis is clearly arguable, which means it can be vigorously debated. It's not a fact, but an assertion 
that you're going to back up with evidence. All right. Um, President Obama is the current president of the United States. That's not arguable. That's a fact. All right. If you were to say President Obama is the best president this nation has ever had, that is debatable. All right. Vigorously debatable. Um, and so you, that's where you need to focus your attention. All right. It's not a fact. It's arguable. There'll be people who oppose your idea. But again, you're not using first person. So instead of saying, I think President Obama is the best president, or in my opinion, President Obama is the best president, you just say, President Obama is the best president. Number two, it has to be defendable. It has to be supported with sufficient arguments and evidence. If you can't support it, with evidence, with examples, with information from outside sources, with statistics, then it's, it's not a good thesis statement, okay? So it has to be defendable. Are you going to be able to create a line of reasoning for this? A strong claim is responsible. It takes an ethically sound position. I once had a student try to argue that the Nazis did some good because they conducted medical experiments. That's not ethically sound. That's not a responsible thesis statement. And I would not let the student write about that. It, it's, it's irresponsible writing. It's unethical. All right. So you want to be sure your statement is responsible. It's understandable. You want to be very clear in your terminology. You want to define keywords if you need to. And it needs to be interesting, challenging, worth discussion, not bland and easily accepted. All right. Uh, school age children should be given the option to have fruit for lunch. Yeah, I don't think you would probably find very many people that are going to debate that. Okay. So you want to be, you want it to be challenging. You want it to be worth discussion. You want your reader to feel like at the end of their pa of your paper that they spent their time well reading what you've written, okay? So again, going back, clearly arguable, defendable, responsible, understandable, and interesting. Some last things to remember about the thesis statement. Avoid all or nothing extreme claims that leave no room for exceptions. Those are very easy to, to attack. When you say words like always, or all, or, um, you know, without exception. That leaves your claim very easy to attack. And it indicates to your reader that you're a little overzealous, that you haven't considered that there are two sides to each story. And there are always two sides to each story. So you want to avoid all or nothing extreme claims. All right? All, best, never, worse. Don't use language like that in your thesis statement. As you develop your thesis statement, again, make a truly meaningful claim. You don't want it to be obvious or trivial or unsupportable because that's not worth the energy it takes to argue your point. You want to use qualifiers to temper your claim, all right? It'll make you seem more reasonable, more logical, more ethical if you use words like some, almost, frequently, might, maybe, tends to, typically, usually, likely, if done correctly. So that again, you understand or, and, and your reader understands that you've considered that there may be exceptions. And there's always exceptions. All right? You also need to replace vague words with more exact words and vague ideas with exact information instead of saying, Capital punishment is bad. Yeah, it's a little vague. It's not super interesting. So replace that vague idea of being bad with a more specific idea. Okay? If the subject naturally has two, three, or four divisions, and your subject will because you're going to develop a line of reasoning. And so if you think that, let's say, marijuana should be legalized, and that's your thesis. Marijuana should be legal in all states. That's a thesis, and that's debatable, and that's a good start. But 
if you've developed a good line of reasoning, you can go ahead and put those short phrases from your line of reasoning in the thesis. So I could write, marijuana should be legalized in all states for medical purposes, comma, because it's not as bad as alcohol, comma, and because it would generate tax revenue. I'm just thinking of these off the top of my head. I don't know if any of those things are true. But you put those three things in your thesis statement, you have a clear line of reasoning there, then each paragraph, each body paragraph in your paper will talk about one of those statements from your thesis statement. And it ties it together nice and neat for your reader. They know in the beginning exactly what you're going to say. And you've stated up front what your line of reasoning is. So consider that. And you want to always, but especially in an argument composition, you want to avoid heavy-handed thesis statements like, now I will write about, or this essay will discuss. Instead of saying, now I will write about capital punishment, that's, that's not debatable. You are writing about capital punishment. That's a fact. You would say capital punishment, whatever your debatable thesis statement is. This essay will discuss how capital punishment is wrong. We know we're, we're about to read it. So there's no re reason to preempt your reader that way. Just say capital punishment is wrong. Again, that's a little vague there. Um, but, but um you know, it, it, like I said, you don't want to announce it. It's very heavy handed. So what I want you to think about as you're developing your line of race or as you're developing your thesis statement are those things and test it out. Is there someone who would say, no, marijuana should be legalized. Someone's going to say marijuana should not be legalized. The death penalty should be banished in all 50 states. There's someone who's going to say the death penalty should not be banished in all 50 states. It has to be debatable. I hope this helps. If you have any questions as you work, be sure to let me know.